G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be all about catch cans. Specifically, we're going to be comparing a couple of brands of catch cans. We're going to be switching over my original HBD catch can for one of these ProVent 200 series made by Man and Hummel. We're going to go over the reasons why I'm changing this, a few of the new upgrades I've made to the 2020 model of the uh, ProVent 200, and we're going to go through a step-by-step -step installation guide about how to install one of these on your 200 series Land Cruisers. So stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So the first step we're going to do today guys is to remove this HBD catch can that we've had fitted on the 200 series for about a year now. I have two dedicated videos on this channel in relation to what I think about this and also about how much oil it's caught over a period of 8,000 kilometers. So if you want to see how this particular catch can went, check out those two videos and it'll also tell you a little bit about how these catch cans work and why we fit them to our four-wheel drives. So let's get this old system removed and get ready to fit up the new one. Now I want to make it very clear that I'm not sponsored by any company in relation to this video, I'm not receiving any commission for it, and I did purchase both of these catch cans myself at full retail price. So this will be a complete unbiased review and just my reasoning as to why I'm changing these catch cans today. So let's get straight into removing this HPD. So removing the catch can is super easy. It's just a matter of undoing those two bolts holding that plastic cover down, taking them off, and then undoing the four hose clamps that hold the two hoses, connecting the catch can to the intake system and the catch can to the crankcase ventilation system. There's then two bolts holding the catch can to the bracket and then two bolts holding the bracket to the firewall of the car. So there you have it guys, the HBD catch can is now out of the car. Relatively simple and easy process, just a few bolts holding that bracket down and just a matter of getting these hose clamps off and they are pretty tight as you may have seen from that footage. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna empty this catch can out because obviously it does have a bit of oil inside of it and we're gonna clean it up and then compare it side by side with the ProVent 200, seeing some of the differences, construction quality, size, the way in which it empties and all that sort of stuff. So let's get this one cleaned up, let's see how much we get out of it and then we'll uh, compare side by side how they work. So I would have loved to show you guys how much oil came out of the uh, catch can there and show you the close-up there of the beaker. However, I did accidentally knock over the beaker spilling oil all over the table while I was cleaning up that top of that unit there. So it was about 80 mil of oil and that was over a period of about 10 to 12,000 kilometers of driving. Okay guys, so we've got the HPD catch can out and empty now, nice and cleaned up and we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two main bodies of the unit. So we'll start here with the HPD catch can. So the HPD unit is a fully aluminium metal construction. There's no plastic on this unit whatsoever, uh, and there's two halves to it. So you've got the top half up here, which is where all the uh, oily gases are passed through, and then you've got the bottom section. So you probably saw me unscrew that when I was emptying it out, and that is where the oil is collected down the bottom there. So that is just simply a screw on and screw off fitting. It can be emptied from inside the car, although in my, my car where the stuff's going on, I do have to remove these two bolts just to allow a little bit of access to tip this up so I can remove the cup. But some cars, depending on your model, you can unscrew this from where it is mounted and empty that straight out. This little metal stick you see here is just simply a dipstick and that will obviously pop into the cup and just sort of give you an indication about how full that cup is and when it's time to come and empty that. And again, that's got a rubber O-ring on it, but it is an aluminium construction. Then you've got your two intake hoses up here, so you've got your intake in and your, your pipe coming out. So essentially all this unit is doing is sending some uh, the oily gases through the intake pipe and then through these mesh filters here. So there's a couple of mesh filters, they're a couple of layers deep, they're held in by little metal circlips and the oily gases pass through those filters into the cup and then back through and up through that uh, intake line that goes into your air intake and through your intercooler. So on this unit, that is the only filtration you've got, are those little metal gauze, and that is gonna separate the oily gases from the, uh, the air, the cleaner air, and then let clean air go back into your intercooler. So as you've seen from me emptying out this HBD catch can, this unit does do exactly what it says. It does remove those uh, oily uh, vapors, creates them into a liquid form in the bottom of this cup, and then allows cleaner air to go through and into, into the intake system of the vehicle. When you're done emptying that, you just simply screw that back on and obviously make sure these bolts are tight if you had to remove them to empty them. Now that is the unit there. It's a really, really well-constructed unit. Really, it looks really good in your engine bay and you know it's gonna be nice and strong with that metal construction. 
Now also with the HPD catch can, you get a couple of pipes as well. Uh, and this is obviously where the intake and those oily gases are passed through. Now one thing I have noticed with this kit is obviously these hoses are significantly shorter than the hoses come that came with the Western Filters kit for the Provent 200. And that's because it's mounted a lot closer than where this Provent has to be mounted in the engine bay. We'll go over that in just a moment. But one thing I have found is due to the, uh, the curvature of these that's required on these hoses for where this is mounted, it has kinked up here. Although it hasn't uh, sealed the unit, it definitely has put some internal pressure there and uh, it would have easily built up some pressure um, if I hadn't done something about that sooner rather than later. But those two pipes, relatively short, very simple. We've got some good quality clips on the end of them and uh, that held very tight. Never had any oil leak from any of the fittings on this HBD unit. Um, however, I do notice that there is oil in both the pipes. Obviously expect it coming out of the crankcase ventilation system, but you kind of don't want to be seeing that oil going back into your intake, which is evident on both of these pipes here. And also you can see that quite evidently on the intake pipe that goes into your air intake on the vehicle, there is actually oil pulling up where this hose was connected. So although the unit is doing the job in removing some of that oil vapor, it's clearly not removing all of it, and it's still building up, still going through the intercooler, and still clogging up the intake system. Okay, so let's move on to the Man Hummel Kit Provent 200 series and all the accessories supplied by Western Filters, which is where I purchased this kit from. I'll just say again that I'm not sponsored by them and nor did I receive any commission from them. I just like the way they have their kit, their brackets, and we're gonna give it a go today. So starting with the body of the catch can itself. Now as you can see, it's the same sort of shape and style as a HPD, but it does look significantly different and there are some differences between these two units. So the first most obvious difference is that it's a full plastic construction. There's no metal in sight. It's all uh, thick ABS plastic type material. Now there's a couple of other major differences. The first one being the way in which it uh, drains and the way in which it can be emptied. So rather than splitting in half and emptying a cup out like on the HBD, you do have a port at the end where the oil builds up within the unit and then comes out through a hose, which is supplied by the Western Filters kit. And you can have a little tap on the end of that and it can be emptied out from lower in the vehicle uh, like a wheel arch or something like that. You can also opt to have these um, hoses bled straight back into the engine oil or the, the sump of the engine if you want to. It's not something I'm interested in doing. The oil's burnt, it's not the same consistency nor does it have the same properties as clean engine oil. I don't wanna be recirculating that through the oil of the vehicle. So I will be using the kit coming from Western Filters, which is a single hose that will come down, we'll mount it somewhere in the wheel arch with a tap so it can be easily emptied. Now the other big difference as well is the way in which it's accessed inside. Uh, rather than again spinning down the bottom, you do have a lid on top, which can be opened up and that will uh, give you access to the interior of the unit. Now this is where this unit becomes significantly different to that of the HBD. Rather than just having metal gauze pads that separates that oil vapor, you actually have a fibrous uh, oil filter material. So something like an uh, oil filter or an air filter, that's the sort of material you're gonna get on one of these cartridges that go inside this unit here. So the way in which this works is you have your intake pipe at the top here, you'll have your vapors go inside the unit. That will then uh, be injected into the interior of this um, filter material here and come out through the outside, therefore exiting this lower pipe here. Now the way in which these uh, filters are designed is obviously it's not going to uh, start draining that oil straight away because the material will soak up that oil vapour initially. Until that material is soaked, you're not going to start getting liquid form oil dropping into the bottom of this unit. As the oil vapour is pushed through to the exterior of this uh, material here, little droplets of oil will form, it will drip down the side of the unit, passing through the bottom lip of this filter and then into the collection drain hose at the bottom of the body of the unit. Now moving on to the unit itself, obviously your clean gases are going to be coming out of this lower section down here. And you can see here that there's some sort of contraption going on on the side of it. Now this here is a PCV or a pressure control valve. Essentially this is like a one-way valve and this will manage the pressure from both from the crankcase and the vacuum and the pressure from the intake system as well. So on these Land Cruisers, like the one behind me, we do have a closed circuit crankcase ventilation system. You've got to keep in mind it's going to be vacuum and pressure from the intake side as well as that from the crankcase. And that will be varying depending on your throttle response, whether you're idling under full throttle, de full throttle or deacceleration. And this pressure control valve here will manage the pressure both from the crankcase itself and also from the intake system where it's being put back into and make sure it's suitable for each part of the, uh, each uh, range of the engine's RPM. Now that's something that the HBD can doesn't have. It's just relying on the system to be a straight through system, passing through those mesh gauges. So again, it's gonna be increasing the safety and just the reliability and the longevity of this unit 
and a safety factor for your engine as well. Now one of the new uh, features for the ProVent 200 for 2020 is its internal uh, ventilation system. So this is its overpressure ventilation system. So if for whatever reason this unit were to be clogged up and there were a pressure build up, obviously the system needs to allow that pressure to be released, otherwise you're going to have some dramas in your engine and it could cause your engine to fail. So in here there used to be a uh, valve on the top of the lid up here which used to uh, activate if there was any buildup of excessive pressure for whatever reason the unit wasn't uh, operating like it should. Now they've moved that unit now to a little unit on the bottom of the filter. Now inside this filter you can see a spring type mechanism down the bottom down there and that is the um, internal ventilation system. So if for whatever reason the, the system were to build up pressure, there is a section down the bottom of the internal canister that will allow that pressure to be released. And yes, it will put it into your intake, but it's not gonna cause your engine to fail. Now, if you do have a ProVent prior to 2020, you can actually get the upgrade or you require as a new lid, some new O-rings and a new cartridge, and you can turn your ProVent 200 into what they're calling the ProVent 200 uh, IV which is the stands for internal ventilation. So in terms of maintenance for the ProVent 200, the only thing you need to do is replace these filter, uh, fibrous filter material once they do fill up. So that's every, say, 40 to 50,000 as recommended by Mann and Hummel, uh, but that will depend on your type of vehicle, the amount of blow by, and the type of driving that you're doing, and the sort of loads that you're putting your car under. So that's one uh, negative compared to the HBD. There is no ongoing maintenance or ongoing uh, requirements for the HBD other than emptying the system out. So in terms of mounting the system, again, it's fairly easy, just like the HBD was. You've got a bracket here. This one's made by Western Filters, which does fit into some OEM brackets in uh, bolts inside the vehicle, and we'll go into that as we install it. You do have this sleeve that wraps around the unit, and that will bolt to the bracket itself. Now, the sleeve is fully adjustable in the way in which these hose, these, uh, hose outlets are point, and it's just a matter of taking, uh, undoing this little clip at the back here and turning the unit to fit whichever way is desired for your fitment in your vehicle. You do also get a pretty thorough instruction guide in relation to how to fit these units from Western Filters. Fairly easy to follow, but overall it is a very simple thing to put into your vehicle. So one thing we can also do side by side is compare the physical size difference between these two units. So you can see here the ProVent 200 is much bigger. Now look, that's obviously to fit that fibrous filter material and have that reservoir at the bottom there for capturing the oil. However, that does pose a little bit of an issue, especially those for smaller vehicles that don't have much room left in the engine bay. As a result of this being so much bigger, it does actually have to be mounted in the top left hand corner of my engine bay as opposed to where the HBD was originally. And that also means that these hoses are going to be significantly longer and we're going to have to route them through the back of the engine bay in order to reach this unit and get around safely to the, intake, the crankcase ventilation system and the intake hose pipes. So there have been some studies done by Curtin University here in Australia comparing a whole lot of different uh, catch cans including that of the ProVent 200, 150, 100 along with the HPD and several other catch cans as well both in relation to the amount of pressure that it builds up in the crankcase and the efficiency of reducing those oil vapours from the air passing through it. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you a couple of the uh, graphs and the, the findings from that study and we'll come back and then we'll stall this catch can. Like I mentioned, this is a study conducted by SAE International comparing a range of oil mist separators, often referred to as catch cans. This study aims to compare the efficiency of 12 separators in multiple tests, including a wet and dry filter material tests, variable flow rates, and the efficiency of each filter in terms of catching the oil vapors and the quality factor of each filter. This study is extremely thorough and although I'm not going to go over all the specifics of the testing, constants and variables, this study is publicly available from SAE free of charge for those who are interested in the full report. Today I will be specifically comparing the filter marked as CF 2.1, which is the Provent filter by Mann and & Hummel, and the filter labelled as CC1, this being the catch cam manufactured by High Performance Diesel HBD. This first test, as shown in figure 9, shows the efficiency of each of the CF2 marked filters in terms of removing the oil mist as the flow rate increases. We can see here that the filter CF2.1, the Provent, has well exceeded other similar styled filters, reaching an efficiency of 98%. CF2.1 looks impressive when compared with other similar styled filters, however in the efficiency test when compared with the CC marked separators, we can see that the Provent is well and truly more effective. The HPD separator marked as CC1 only reaches a maximum of 70% efficiency when running at maximum testing flow rate of 250 litres per minute. 
Further, this test study creates an equation to identify the filter quality factor of each separator. Again, if you are interested, the full explanation can be located on this document provided by SAE International. We can see the ProVent has superior quality over the similar type filters and further substantial superiority over the catch can styled filters including that of the HPD. We can see by this bar graph that ProVent manufactured by Mann and Hummel is far superior than over most of their competitors in the market and significantly and more efficient and effective than that of the HPD unit. In conclusion, as expected, Curtin University found the filters CF2.1 and CF1.2 had the lowest dry pressure drop in their category and had the higher, highest capture efficiency. This is one of the main reasons I have decided to switch my catch cans around today and hopefully be able to conduct a real life, although as not scientific test, in the future in regards to how much oil vapour each unit collect. So there you have it guys, that's the reason I've changed to a ProVent 200 series. We'll see how they go. Uh, so let's start by doing a step-by-step -step installation guide about how to install one on your 200 series. So the first thing you need is the bracket from Western Filters, and this just fits into uh, this back left corner of the 200 series engine bay. So one bolt will be reused, the one that holds uh, the horn bracket up here, and one is supplied in the hardware kit, which will bolt down into a pre-threaded hole in the base there, just above the wheel arch. Uh, once we've got that in then, we'll then install this uh, can down onto that bracket and we'll sit in there. Now just having a look at it, I do suspect this is going to be fairly tight down there. So we'll follow the instructions, make sure we get the right order, just to make it nice and easy for ourselves. So let's uh, start getting this all fitted up. So one thing I noted from the Western Filters Kit was just how well everything fitted to the vehicle. You can see the bracket there fitted perfectly first go, it even has a cutaway there for the lower end of that gas strut that lifts the bonnet up. Along with that the hoses were the perfect length and the unit fit very nicely in that area. So so far just based on the construction and the quality of fitment I would recommend this product. So the bracket there for the ProVent uh, is now installed, however I haven't put the uh, the actual can onto the bracket just yet. I'm going to uh, just skip that step in the instructions just because I believe it's going to be very tight to get these uh, hose connections onto that can once it's installed. So what I'm going to do now is just run these hoses from this uh, crankcase ventilation system up top here and also the air intake uh, hose. I'm going to run it, feed them behind the intercooler and over to that corner and then we get it all fitted up, plumbed in and fitted down to that bracket. Okay, so we've plumbed up those lines now. We've got one from the crankcase ventilation system and then one going back into the intake of the vehicle. All our hose clamps are on. They're just all loosely fitted at the moment. We're gonna make sure that they're all in the right places just so they don't rub against the hoses and create wear over time. But one thing we wanna do before we hook up it all to the ProVent 200 is just get the drain hose ready. So this is one thing I really do like about the, uh, the ProVent 200 is the drain hose and the fact that this can be mounted anywhere underneath the car and uh, sort of, you know, you can see through it, it's clear, which means you better see the level of oil that's in here and it's super easy to drain. It's just a matter of undoing this small bolt on the bottom of this little uh, tap here and then flicking the tap across. And then when you're finished, again, close the tap and then put the bolt on. You're not going to have any oil leaking out and uh, you're gonna make sure you have plenty of storage in there for the oil. So we'll see if this is probably a little bit too long, but what we're gonna do is just gonna leave it the full length, install it on the base of the ProVent, put the ProVent down into the area, making sure this goes down into that wheel arch, and then we can start plumbing up these lines and fitting the ProVent to the bracket itself. So there we have it guys, that catch can is fitted and installed nicely. You can see that kit there from Western Filters just is a perfect fit for this Land Cruiser. That bracket in there uses those two OEM bolts just to simply bolt in when there's no drilling and cutting of the vehicle required at all. The placement where it sits does fit very nicely in this 200 series. <clears throat> this upper hose here does just touch this airbox and just, just touches this uh, brake reservoir here, but nothing I'm too worried about. It is just a flexible hose. It's not gonna do any damage there in the way it's sitting at the moment. There is a very tight fit down there, but it does fit very nicely. In terms of maintenance, having it located here is gonna make it very easy to uh, replace that filter cartridge. Just a matter of undoing that lid, pulling out that cartridge, and replacing that when necessary. That is honestly as simple as it's gonna be. No more undoing bolts and having to drain out the cups of oil. Okay, so last thing we're gonna do to finish this install is just get that drain hose sorted. So just for ease of access and also to show you guys on the camera, we're gonna remove this wheel. We'll have a look at where we can put this uh, drain plug and keep it up out of the way.
Okay, so after having a bit of a think about it, having a bit of a look around, I've mounted it so it comes down behind this guard here, behind this plastic guard here, across the top of the chassis rail, and again, protected by this guard, and then behind and into the inside of the chassis rail, just down here. Now behind that chassis rail is a small bracket which is going to protect it. I'm just going to zip tie it up as well when I need to undo it. This is just a matter of undoing one zip tie and it will come down on the inside of the chassis rail down here. So I'll try and get on the camera and I can show you a different point of view. Okay, so you can see here the suspension components. And I'm just holding this plastic guard out at the moment. You can see there, that hose there is the drain hose. So it comes along behind this plastic guard which will obviously be protecting it while we're forward driving. And onto the inside of this chassis rail. Once on the inside of the chassis rail, it just runs to here, and this is where I'm going to be zip tying it up, just uh, supporting it up against these hard lines up here. And then the uh, tap will just sit inside this little uh, bracket here, which protects another junction for those hard lines. So it's not going to get damaged. Yeah, it might get a little bit dirty, but that's not going to be a drama. When I come to emptying it out, I just pull it out, and even with it still zip tied up, I'll still be able to empty it down into a container, which will be underneath it. So it's up, out of the way, protected from dirt, dust, and it won't get in the way of the suspension or wheel components while we're out forward driving. There we have it guys, the ProVent 200 catch can is now mounted into the car, all plumbed up, and we are ready to go for a drive. So like I said earlier, make sure when you have just fitted it, just check those connections from time to time, especially in the first couple of thousand kilometers. Make sure there's no oil leaking from any of those connections, and make sure those hose clamps stay nice and tight. So I did forget to mention as well, the kit does come with a couple of cable ties. So just trying to cable tie a couple of those hoses together just to minimize the amount of rubbing. They are very thick, those hoses, and they are strong. But if you're going to minimize the rubbing, it's going to make it make sure it lasts a long time. It just increases that longevity of the product. So look, overall, I can say the Western Filters kit was very easy to install. It came with everything you needed. Nothing was missing. Straightforward instructions and a very easy install. This is something that you can definitely do at home on your cruiser or any car, as a matter of fact, as long as you can find that crankcase ventilation port and the intake port, just pull them off and you should be able to buy a kit that suits and bolts straight onto your vehicle as well. Now obviously, I can't comment about how effective they are just yet because we're going to have to take the car for a drive. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you the confidence to maybe give this a go on your vehicle uh, at your home. It really is quite an easy job and it does give some good benefits. If you're interested in some sort of the benefits that this does give you, check out my intercooler clean video. You better see some of the differences in the intake temperatures that the vehicle obtained just by giving the intercooler a nice clean. There's still a catch can like this will keep that intercooler nice and clean and keep those results in terms of your fuel economy, your power, and your longevity and a healthy engine at the best it possibly can. So guys, if you have any other questions, make sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at ExploringOz. I'll be make sure to get back to you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.